Welcome to another wrap of Super Rugby action where the Highlanders' best efforts were eventually thwarted by a tenacious Chiefs comeback. Elsewhere, the Crusaders never looked like kick-starting their season with the Blues' deserved winners. The Hurricanes couldn't finish off what they started so well, gifting the Stormers a win, the Rebels and Waratahs both impressing in victories over South African opponents. The Purple Patch the Lions were enjoying turned into a case of the Blues when the Bulls took charge, the Brumbies being the only team to win away from home in the round. I think once we got a bit of line speed, got off the line, knocked a few guys over, we were able to look after them defensively. And I mean, from an attack point of view, we talked about when we're kicking, kicking from wider channels, uh, so we can kick him behind Smith. And I think the first time we actually did that, he hacked one back, and Liam Squire had a bit, a bit of a burst, and we scored in the other corner. So um, yeah, a lot of that simple structure stuff got to do better. I mean, we've got good depth, and we've got a lot of confidence in our bench. So. Um, you know, you're really happy with the contributions of those guys. I was actually in, in two minds. Some of the boys were calling for a, for it to go through the hands, and then I just saw Tix give me a bit of a wave. So I looked, Tix did really well to get up in the air and contest, and then get a ball away to Charlie, who was able to get over in the corner. So yeah, said, Ren said it was a pretty frustrating game, um, taking nothing away from the Highlanders. They made it that way, but for us, we need to make sure we were a lot better uh, in a couple of weeks here against the Stormers. Uh, the great thing about this team is we're, we're never out of the fight. We, uh, we know that we can always come back no matter what the deficit at, at half time as long as we stick to our processes and we're able to do that in the second half, get a bit more pill and apply a little bit more pressure. The Hondas are a good side and you know what, what you've seen over the first couple of weeks from an Australian and New Zealand point of view is that you know uh, anyone's beatable and you, know, you can't uh, take anyone for granted and so on and so you know I think reputations count for bugger all. And uh, certainly we've seen that in the results. And I know the Highlanders would have come here with a lot of confidence and would have backed themselves to, to roll us tonight. So, you know, uh, you know, fortunate we were able to get things together and we got a lot of, um, found a lot of space up the middle of Rucks and got them behind them and that sort of generated a bit of go forward for us. Toad had a busy night. Obviously, um, when we got a little bit of ball, he, he certainly plugged the short side and created a little bit of space in around that. So. Uh, he's pretty stoked to get through a lot of footy and got a little knock to the head. We had to take him off for a few minutes to assess uh, concussion. And, uh, but you know, when you're leading by a couple of points, pretty keen to have him on the field. He's uh, he's probably the best defensive nine in the competition, and um, so he, he played a big part there. Come Stormers, we may only have two or three out, which uh, I think we went into tonight with 11 out. We're trying to create competition for places. It's a bit more difficult in the backs because we've had quite a few missing at the moment, but. Um, you yeah, know, we've got some really good options to come back in. Oh, I'm really enjoying the challenge, um, and that's exactly what it is. A little bit more responsibility, and you know, the good thing being co-captains is I can bounce a few things off Liam. He's done it for a couple of years now, so yeah, I'm just looking at, uh, looking forward to, to the full season, seeing how I grow as a leader and as a person, and hopefully continue to contribute. You won the toss, eh? Yeah. I think it's the first toss we've won since about them and... Uh, March last year, so uh, it's good news. I, I think our scrum was pretty solid tonight, but we just didn't have a lot of scrums to operate off. And uh, we, but we were able to put them under a bit of pressure at scrum time, and you know, our line outs still got to be better. And uh, so that'll be a focus, especially coming up against the Stormers. So, you know, the ball's kicked out a lot in modern game, there's a lot of line outs, and so it's an important source for us to launch off. And so the boys are working hard, and uh, it'll fall into place, but. Uh, hasn't quite done so in the first couple. Pretty proud of the guys. Um, created a lot of rugby, a lot of scoring opportunities. We capitalised on most of them, but the, the most important ones we didn't. And the game slipped out of our hands. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit disappointing in that in that regard. The team are pretty down around that, but I think they can be proud in terms of you know, play the quality opposition. Um, and look, we just take the positives and have to get on to the next match. You know, we still had our chances right at the end there, but um, they probably just didn't take them. But um, we'll learn from that, and we've got a week off, so that's good to freshen up and, and look forward to the force game in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we've got uh, good defence, and you know we uh, we, had, we had a good, good game plan. I thought to uh, you know, make make a few, uh, create a few opportunities, and yeah, I guess we just didn't uh, make the most of our opportunities and made cr crucial mistakes when we. Uh, Probably should have uh, came over some points. I was really happy with the line out. I thought in the first half we closed down the Chiefs line out and sort of um, stagnated any sort of momentum they could get from the line out face. Uh, scrums per usual, bit of a mixed bag. Um, 
you know, so, but I, I think um, I, I can remember one penalty for us and one penalty, you know, for them out of the set piece, pretty even in the scrums, I felt. But in the yeah, line out, I thought we had a slight edge. We, we created some good rugby off our line out. Um, and that's been a wee bit up and down the previous um, few games, including the pre-season. So the guys have worked really hard at that, so that's really pleasing. I thought uh, Josh and Joe and Jared um, and their own are very different types of athletes. Um, Joe obviously hasn't played for a while, he's been injured with a broken finger. And um, yeah, I'll make special mention to, to him. He had, a, he had a great game, kick off, three start, set piece. Um, but he was tireless also around the field, it's exactly what you need from the top five. It's very good. Cards, he's very um, unlucky and personally disappointed that he ever got an opportunity last week. Uh, we, we selected Shane, but this, this week against this opposition, we felt John was more suited to start the game. I think he did him and, um, and the team really proud in terms of his performance. Um, it's, it's a tight rivalry, I think. Uh, again, if I use the Chiefs as an example, you know, with great competition within their own team, they tend to bring the best out of every player, and it's something that we're trying to create. The ref made it pretty easy to approach him this week, which uh, always helps. So, uh, you know, he was um, keen to answer any questions that either myself or Nasi had, so that makes it a lot easier. There was lots of little battles out there, you know, like uh, Tawada and, and Aaron, both key players in the All Blacks and obviously key players within their respective franchises. There was a bit, bit of, you know, and generally their play is affected and influenced by the forwards, you know, so I thought that was a pretty even battle because the packs were pretty even as well up front. Um, it was a, it was a, for me. It was a real match of, you know, inches. It was, it was, we scored, they scored. You know, we reacted, they reacted, and you know, there was one play or two plays, with two plays short of winning that match. Um, and we prepared to play for 90 minutes because that's the top team we were playing against. But again, it's fully in it. And I'm proud of the boys. And we were coming up against a very big midfield, and um, our tie and Fruin, who, in many ways. Um, ran over the Crusader um, midfield, and um, but particularly Robert, and we needed somebody to combat that. And having injuries to Patrick Osborne and Thorny really forced our hand. Um, and now you sort of sit back and look at um, that selection. Um, it, it, was a, it was a reasonable selection, you know. Both players played um, very well. And, and I think, you know, the hardest thing for, for Malachi is, you know, getting into a new position, but also for Winston coming into. A pressure time, a pressure, a pressure game, and, and I thought he did really, really, really well. This is a new team, guys. Like this is, this is, there's a bunch of nobodies. Some of them, and some of them, the ones that you're sitting in front of you right now, have played a lot of rugby. But and well, what comes with that is no baggage. They're a very new group. You can see it. They played uh, that way last week and this week. Did um, remarkably well by these two fellas, and, um, and generally, when, when you get that right, um, things start to happen down below. So. We used to we created opportunities, and I think that's that's the biggest, biggest promising factor for our team is against the quality of defence. So what what been said about the chest defence, you know, we created some really good attacking opportunities, we scored a more a try from a set piece, and etc. 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 You guys saw the game. You know, I think that's a promising side for us. For myself and Nasi, it's pretty easy to lead this team. You know, we um, you know ask for stuff, and the boys just go out and deliver. So. Uh, yeah, it's a totally different team, as um, Jamie said. It's a different feel to um, our game and, and the environment that we've created this year. So uh, it's one that the boys are getting pretty excited. You know, I think um, you've seen over the last couple of weeks the um, coaching team have put you know, some good game plans into place, and um, the boys have been able to go out and um, execute that. Uh, today we just probably a wee bit off um, winning that game. A look at the overall table sees three of the unbeaten teams take the prime spots. The Rebels, also having won their only game, being good enough to secure them a top six spot. The Highlanders hold on to a playoff berth thanks to collecting bonus points in both games so far. The Blues head up the chases with the Bulls close up, but having played an extra game. Few of the teams below have impressed in the opening rounds and the rare sight of the Crusaders languishing at the tail will concern Red and Black fans, but they'll remember dropping the opening two games last year and still featuring in the semis. Music